Okay. Uh, welcome everyone. This is the uh, status update of the Colo project. If you expect to hear something about dual Android on Nexus 10, that's next door. So let's begin. Hi, I'm uh, Will Ald, and uh, uh, Xiaowei and I are going to uh, talk about Colo. Um, this was talked about last year at the uh, Zen Summit in San Diego. Uh, so this is kind of an update um, from that and kind of what's been done in the meantime. Uh, but we'll start off with just kind of an overview and then uh, shall we, we'll take it into the, the details of what's gone on. Um, so uh, uh, what is Colo? Uh, Colo is a, um, a, a coarse grain lock stepping um, for high availability. The idea is that you uh, want to provide a solution for a client server model. So you encapsulate the uh, server side um, so that it doesn't have to know anything about uh, the high availability um, features that are there. It can just uh, um, uh, you know, do its own thing, do the, whatever the server application is. Um, uses uh, dual VMs on, on separate uh, systems and uh, it uses a more relaxed uh, constraint uh, mechanism than was previously done um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, uh, in terms of the way that it talks to the client the uh, clients will send in the, you know, their request to, for information or you know, whatever it is that they're getting from the server. The server will, <clears throat> um, or the uh, Colo system, will take that request and replicate it out to, to the two uh, VMs that are, that are handling the, the work. The VMs will, you know, of course, pass it into the application. Application will respond with, with its... Uh, response packets. Those packets are then uh, compared between the two systems and uh, when they're the same then uh, the response is just sent back to the client and when they're different then we sync the, the two, uh, the primary and secondary uh, VMs so that they're back in alignment and uh, um, then the response is uh, given to the client. Um, this is sort of a pictorial view of this. Um, as I, I didn't say it explicitly, but the uh, application is running in both VMs simultaneously, and uh, so they they look very similar. the The differences are all kind of in Zen, where uh, we embed the colo uh, functionality. So in this case, uh, the picture shows a storage unit that's shared. That's one way to do it, but it doesn't need to be shared. That's not a requirement for Colo. Um, now I want to contrast this a little bit with uh, Remus, which is a solution that's been in uh, Zen for a while. Um, and we talk about it later, so uh, just to give you an idea. Um, Remus also uses two systems, uh, two VMs, or two hardware systems, two VMs, um, but it, it's not running both systems simultaneously. It just runs the primary VM. Um, requests come into uh, a Remus system. It also is hiding the, um, the high availability work from the application, so the application in this case also doesn't, you know, doesn't need to be aware of it. But uh, so Remus uh, requests, you know, uh, provides the request to the application, gets the response, and then it buffers the response rather than sending it right back to the uh, to the client. And <clears throat> um, this buffering goes on for a, a predefined period that the operator will will set up. Um, at the end of that period, there's a checkpoint between uh, the primary host and the secondary host which brings the secondary right up to you know, um, the same state as the primary. And then once that's completed, then the, uh, the responses that have been buffered are sent back to the clients. Um, and that allows them to keep uh, the machine state uh, exactly the same between the two hosts. 
Um, if there's a fail, actually I didn't mention this in uh, Colo, but uh, these are almost the same where if there's a failure at some point um, uh, for Colo, uh, the secondary uh, VM is already running and it will just take over. Uh, for uh, Remus, the uh, secondary VM will be started up and then it'll take over. So I didn't realize this was a build. <laughs> Okay, um, so there, there are some problems with the approach, um, with existing approaches. Um, you know, one of the existing approaches is just this kind of instruction level lock stepping. And in, in this approach, um, it, it really doesn't compete very well performance wise uh, because there's just so much overhead. Um, so I, I um, other than it uh, uh, not being a terribly good solution, especially if it's done in software, um, you know, it, it doesn't uh, compete. In the periodic checkpointing, this is uh, something like Remus, um, then you've got the extra latency for the packets that you're uh, buffering up, and you're doing a checkpoint at, every, at the end of every uh, period, and so that uh, has quite a bit of overhead associated with it. Now, <clears throat> so uh, looking at Dreamus, it was, uh, that was a big part of the inspiration for Colo, um, and trying to figure out if there was a way to reduce the, um, the overhead there. And um, what we did was look at, the, at how to relax the constraints of the you know, having um, a, an exact machine state replication. And uh, we still update the machines, but it's at a slower rate. And essentially what uh, we're looking at those packets that I talked about earlier, when we get the two packets back, we compare and see if they're in sync. And uh, the, the relaxed state is essentially uh, dependent on the um, uh, the assumption that the application itself is going to go through a valid set of uh, states. So uh, moving from one state to the next will always be valid for either the primary or the secondary. And so if they're in a state you know, where they're re uh, delivering the same response, then the next step in that will also be a valid state. If those two are out of sync, then there's no guarantee that you could move from one state to the next that, that you might see. So at that point we need to sync them. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, and so this actually ties the synchronization to the application itself or the characteristics of the application. So if you have an application that's um, doing things that tend to make their output uh, vary more, then um, you know, you'll see more um, updates and synchronizations. And when the application's not, you know, then you see very few. So uh, in most cases, we find that uh, this sort of a relaxation does lower the, uh, the number of synchronizations required. And so the overhead's lower than the Remus case, but uh, not in every case. Now, um, we look at a, uh, a picture, you know, that has a little more detail than the previous one. We see that there's sort of a heartbeat uh, uh, node there within the DOM zero, and that's used to determine if there's a, a failover that's needed. When when you don't get the heartbeat you're expecting, then you uh, do the failover. There's the um, <coughs> the checkpoint um, uh, facility there that that uh, manages the synchronizations and the colo manager where uh, the, the um, uh, response packets are compared and, and uh, decisions are made about what to do there. Um, other than that, it's just the, uh, the primary and secondary VMs um, on the system. So it's, it's fairly clean. And then, uh, so the, the current state um, is that uh, uh, the patches have been put out on the mailing list. There's a, uh, a paper that's at this URL here uh, that you can get on the kind of the current state of the work 
on Zen. And then uh, Huawei, this is where uh, Xiaowei is from. Uh, Huawei has announced that they will uh, use Colo in their uh, Fusion Sphere product. And uh, from here, I'll let Xiaowei uh, take it. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I will give you a detail uh, of our uh, core uh, upgrade uh, up update. The first one is our TCP/IP uh, optimization. So, uh, mainly goal of TCP/IP optimization is to uh, uh, make uh, the packet response between the primary VM and the second VM uh, be more uh, similar, so we can. Uh, have a uh, less checkpoints, which means a uh, bad performance. So let's look at uh, them one by one. First is a uh, per connection comparison. As we know that from uh, mm, server scenarios, there could be multiple connections between the client and the server. And it, uh, it's hard to anticipate the packet uh, orders uh, among the multiple TCP connections. So it will uh, triggers uh, many checkpoints in our coral uh, solutions. Uh, fortunately, if uh, we change the uh, comparison a bit to do the per connection comparison, so the situation can become much better. And the next one is called a uh, cost grain TCP or uh, timestamp. As we know, uh, timestamp is uh, used for identify uh, TCP timeout. And uh, in Linux, timestamp is gotten uh, from the system time. On, uh, even on the non-virtualized uh, environment, we cannot uh, guarantee the uh, sit, time, sit time between two servers be exactly the same. And it's harder on the virtualization platforms because we need to virtualize our time. Uh, fortunately, we thought that the uh, TCP timestamp may, need to, may, uh, may not need to be such uh, precise. So we uh, introduced a cost grain uh, TCP timestamp, which means uh, which has a uh, time granularity of 128 uh, millisecond. And, our, and uh, let's look at uh, more details. The next one is a cost grain TCP notification window size. It's basically it's basically the same uh, story. Uh, the package uh, uh, from the primary and the secondary VM diverge just because they have a different window size. So we want uh, then the window size window size to be more uh, common. So here's uh, how here's our uh, cost green window size uh, algorithm. If the original window size is less than two hundred and fifty six, we just run down them to the nearest power of two. And if uh, the window size is larger than that, we mask the eight least significant bits. So uh, this time, uh, give you an example. Uh, without the cost grain window size, uh, uh, our comparison model will think the two packets are different and will trigger a checkpoint. And with our uh, modifications, uh, it, it, it looks uh, exactly the same, and the packet will be sent out to the client directly. OK, another example uh, is uh, deterministic segmentation. As we know that the uh, application data is uh, goes down the network stacks, it will be uh, assembled into SKB buffers, and the buffer size is determined by the MTU size. So here's an example. Uh, one application sends the first data uh, with a size of uh, 3,000 uh, 3, bytes. It will be divided into uh, S uh, three SKB buffers. And later, the application will send the, another data. Uh, and the data uh, will, mm, is like, it will be appended to the last SKB buffer uh, depending on whether the, the last SKB buffer is sent out or not. So it triggers another uh, possibility of a packet divergence. So our uh, solution is just simple. Uh, it is simple just to uh, prevent the uh, packet to be appended to the last SKB buffer. OK, next, uh, let's look at how our uh, Coral uh, do the storage uh, process. 
Uh, in core design, uh, storage uh, state is uh, considered as an internal state, just like uh, memory and uh, CPU, which means that uh, we need to guarantee the state uh, be exactly the same at on each checkpoint. And uh, here's how uh, we does it. We will uh, add a module in, into uh, Zen Tab Disk 2 to in intercept every a request from the guest, every read and a write request from the guest, and uh, it will determine if the uh, request will send down the story stack or be certified uh, just uh, w within its cache. And uh, first, let's look at how a uh, write operation works. Uh, on the primary node, the write request will uh, be copied and uh, sent to the remote side. Which, uh, and be cached inside a uh, PV, uh, which which we call a, a PVM cache, and in the meantime, the, uh, the data will be sent down to the story stack, and on the uh, secondary node, the write request will just be simple, uh, will uh, simply be cached in the SVM cache. And there less, then let's look out uh, of how the read request works. On the secondary node side, is a Request will uh, first look at the cache. If it is, exists, it will uh, be certified. Otherwise, it will do, uh, read from the storage. And on the uh, primary node side, the process doesn't change. On checkpoint, uh, what de device, uh, 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 device manager will call the block driver to flush the uh, primary virtual machines or cache down to the storage because we need uh, the primary node state exactly be copied to secondary. And on failure, which means that the secondary node will take over. So we just uh, get rid of the primary uh, primary virtual machine's cache and we'll uh, flash the secondary virtual machine's cache. OK, uh, next is our memory sync. In our previously design, uh, the memory, uh, the dirty memory will be synced to the remote side on each checkpoint. But there could be problems because uh, when the time period between two checkpoints are, is long, there could be not many uh, data pages accumulated and uh, it will cause uh, uh, high CPU uh, pressure and uh, a long uh, service downtime on checkpoints. So we did some uh, optimization of the checkpoint uh, process. We will do the memory sync uh, at the runtime. So basically, uh, when the uh, when the process uh, breaks uh, from weight, we will check if it's because of a uh, uh, triggered by the checkpoint, or it's just needed to do a uh, one uh, round of a memory sync. And uh, if later we will copy the data to the remote side, and we, it will be cached at the remote side until the next checkpoint then uh, that cache will be synced to the secondary, secondary virtual machine. And uh, uh, this one is very simple. On checkpoint, we need to save and restore the uh, device, uh, PV device uh, state. Uh, uh, yeah. And the previous, uh, on a current solution, it uses uh, Zen store to communicate between the front end and the back end. But one problem is that Zen store could introduce a high latency. Our uh, job is uh, very simple to avoid using Zen store and just uh, using uh, event channel. OK, uh, next, let me show you some uh, performance data. It's just uh, copied from our uh, uh, SOCC paper. First one is uh, uh, our uh, performance data of the web bench uh, benchmark. Uh, here are uh, two, uh, four, four configurations. The first one is native. The second one is Ramus with uh, epoch, which is uh, the uh, period between two checkpoints, uh, equals to 20 milliseconds. And the third one is Ramus with uh, epoch uh, set as uh, 40 milliseconds. And the last one is our chorus performance. As we can see, le first let's look at uh, two uh, Ramus results. We can see that uh, if we set the epoch longer, we can get a bit bet better performance. However, it also means that the p 
packet will be buffered long, for a long time and will, it will have a longer latency. And, uh, but, but our color uh, solution doesn't have such uh, issues. We will send out the package directly if, uh, if, if, if compare modes think that primary and secondary node, uh, nodes, the response is the same. And uh, in, in, uh, with regard to the uh, bandwidth, we also uh, can see that our coral's uh, performance is also be is better than the RAMless. And then next, let's look at the question. Yeah, do you have an explanation for why the uh, tail off in performance on Colo increases the number of threads? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, because uh, it's simply because uh, that uh, the compare mode from the packet or packet diverge, diverge increases and it will do the uh, checkpoint more frequently, it will have the performance. Okay. okay. And then, uh, of course, there are space to optimize in this area. <laughs> okay, next let's look at our scalability uh, result. As we said, that the one uh, key advantage of a coral comparing to the lockstep uh, solution is that it can support SMP against while the lockstep solution can only support UP. So here we do the uh, benchmark with a uh, guest a vCPU set as one, uh, two, and four, and we can see uh, that the performance scales are very well uh, when the vCPU number increases. So. It just uh, means that scalability is good. Okay, next is the benchmark of the uh, PG bench, which will test uh, the uh, database uh, transaction. Uh, it almost uh, tells the same story. <laughs> we got a, be a better throughput, uh, lower latency, and the scalability is, is very good. Okay, upstream. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we have already pushed uh, the initial patch to the Zen upstream uh, this uh, July. And there are a few comments, and more comments are welcome. And, uh, and the Coral Ramus, uh, Coral re re as you said, uh, Coral reuses Ramus for uh, VM checkpoint and heartbeat. And uh, when we do the development, we uh, rely on the uh, Zen, Zen tools, uh, Zen D. Uh, but uh, as uh, the community moved from Zen to Zen Lite, there could be uh, more work uh, to be done on the Zen Lite to uh, support uh, Ramus. Okay, last a summary. Uh, our core work currently has already uh, worked well with the combination of HM Linux guest and the PV driver, and we are uh, doing the development of the to support Windows guest. And uh, we need uh, more participants uh, in the community and want to uh, be checking the upstream uh, as soon as possible. Okay, that's my uh, slides. Any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this through fresh eyes. And mm -hmm. the first big question that I've got is with two nodes, how are you handling the split brain problems? Split what? Split brain problems. So, mm -hmm. with what is <laughs> so split brain happens mm -hmm. when both nodes are still alive. Oh, and split brain. Okay. Yeah. Split, yeah. Uh, actually, this is a uh, not a focus of uh, of Coral. We just do a uh, user heartbeat to check uh, to monitor the health or state of the another another side. We, so we don't do any specific uh, uh, implementations. So there's no mm -hmm. independent attestation service or anything yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So then architecturally, if I'm implementing this, I'm looking at only the primary node. Mm -hmm. And the primary node itself is going to be in a position to detect whether or not the secondary node should come online. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand how the, the information flow is going to, to be handled. Yeah, yeah, if the secondary secondary node thought that the primary is crashed, uh, it will take uh, it try to take over, and uh, so it will respond to the packet. Also, so the client will see the uh, response from the uh, primary and secondary. Okay, so in that case, the, the client is going to have to be discriminating between primary and secondary. Yeah. It, it uses the heart. So. 
the, the secondary, the secondary um, GM will take over when it, when it sees that the heart kind of goes away. Right, right. but I'm, the I'm split brain thing is still there. The, the, so the split brain problem is still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It, it could be a false detection by the heartbeat. Yeah, we didn't uh, fix that problem in our car. Okay. Mm. Okay, cool. Any additional questions? We've got about two minutes. Uh, I had just a quick one. I must, with the heartbeat being associated with DOM0, yes. uh, how about what I would consider to be a suboptimal but possible use case? Um, uh, hardware machine one running VM one, hardware machine two running VM two, hardware machine three running the colos of VM one and VM two simultaneously. Is that not allowed or just uh, it, it, a bad idea? It's a very uh, it's a bad idea because we want yeah. to survive from uh, the hardware crash. So you, you, uh, this it, deployment doesn't change anything. Huh? It, it's just, I, I, I've worked in enough data centers over the years that I could really imagine some manager saying, well, we'll just have the machine out inside the secondary data center that will be the backup to all these other mm -hmm. machines out in the field, and not thinking necessarily about the consequences of doing that. But uh, uh, I was just wondering whether that's even conceivable in this. Uh, uh. So, so you... So you're saying that a case where uh, there are multiple, uh, let's see, um, where you, you have various primaries, but you're using the same uh, host for the multiple yes. secondaries. Um, oh. I, I don't think we've really looked at it, but is that... It is possible, but we'll increase a uh, much higher overhead. Yeah. Just wondering. I, I've definitely seen a lot of the hot spare model. So I, I've definitely seen a lot of the hot spare model um, used over the years. Um, my assumption is that this is very latency sensitive between primary and secondary. Cool. Okay, let's give him a hand. Okay, thank you.